everyone! So today we're discussing the book Control by Lydia Kang. And if you don't know what this book is about, it's basically set in like really futuristic time. Like, it's about this like genetic mistakes I guess, but they're not really mistakes because you find out that like the government or what is doing making them on purpose just to like experiment like doctors are like hey let's make a baby with two heads but then nobody wants a baby with two heads and the government's like but babies with two heads are illegal so it's a mess anyways the premise is that this girl she and her sister and her dad are moving for like the billionth time and on their way there her dad dies in a car accident so her and her sister get put in this foster home but it's not really a foster home it's like a weird safe house for these genetically modified kids so that they don't get killed. But then her sister gets taken by this other house, which is like claims to be a safe house, but it's not really a safe house. It's like a bad safe house that just uses the kids for their powers. Anyways, so... Yeah, it's really good, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, and on my 5 star scale. Which is pretty good, because it's hard to get a 5 from me. Like, 5s are like my very favorite books ever, that I will read a million times. Anyways, I think that's all I have to say for like the non-spoilers. If you want a more in-depth review of the book that's non-spoilery, you can click down below. I will leave a link to my blog where I post non-spoiler reviews of the books that I review on here. So you can go and read that if you are interested. And yeah, that's all I have for the non-spoiler section. So if you haven't read it and you don't want to be spoiled, which I don't, I wouldn't want to be spoiled, then bye. For all the spoilery people that want to hear my spoilers whether you read the book or you just want to be spoiled it's start really confusing at the beginning like I was I the only one that was confused were you confused because I was confused like we start out with Zelia and she's leaving with Dill and her dad but then you don't really understand anything and like it's super futuristic like the mag pods and all that like they're really cool but at first I was like it was kind of like culture shock, like, you know, culture shock is like when you get like your shock because you're in like a brand new culture and like nothing's the same. That's how I felt because like nothing was the same. It was so futuristic that like I couldn't relate. Like the hollows were like, that was so cool. But at the same time, I was like, uh, I don't, I don't know if I liked it. Anyways. I had no idea what the plot was about, and you can't tell from the first couple chapters. Like, the plot is almost non-existent in the first couple chapters. And it, that, I guess that's because, like, I didn't, that made me not really like it at first. Like, it took me, like, a quarter of the way through the book to actually like it because I didn't really get it in the beginning. I didn't get the plot or anything. It was just a futuristic story, but I didn't. Like, nothing made any sense until she finally got to Kara's house. But anyways, Dill gets kidnapped, and that was the most confusing thing ever because, like, we don't understand yet that her dad was killed by the same people that kidnapped Dill, so you don't understand the connection. So you're like, why the hell are people just breaking in to kidnap her sister? Like, I don't understand. And then when that weird guy, like, breathed in her face and made her have hallucinations... Like, all of it made no sense because you didn't know anything about the genetically modified people. You didn't know anything about the plot. Like, it just seriously made no sense. And I think that's why this book got four stars was because, like, it would have gotten five, but in the beginning, I just didn't get it. And then, Zeely gets to Kara's house and she meets everyone and... At first, I didn't really know what to think of them. Like, they were all pretty weird. Except for I totally predicted that Zelia and Sai were going to 
hook up from the beginning when he was like totally hostile to her and she was like ooh like I should be mad but that's actually really hot I was like okay that's really predictable like it was a super cute relationship and I like really enjoyed that part of the book but at the same time I felt like it was really predictable and I'm not saying I don't like predictable because sometimes relationships I like like I like that cute like fluffy love story I like when it's predictable like that and this book it worked because I felt like the predictability in that aspect balanced out the unpredictability in all the other aspects of the book. Like, when they shared the lab together, that was really cute. And it was really cool. Like, all of the science-y facts and stuff were so interesting. Like, the author is an actual doctor, and so, like, everything was completely accurate. And so... It was just really cool to read about all of, like, the stuff that Delia was doing with, like, the DNA and the telomerase and all of that stuff, like, I don't know. It just, it was so interesting. And I already know some of that, like, about some of that. So just to, like, read it in a book that I was enjoying was cool because usually when you read about that stuff, it's in, like, boring textbooks. And then there was some cute scenes between Zelia and Sai, like the rock climbing scene was cute and it was like freaking cool. I want a holographic recreational room where like you just tell it to make something and it does. Like they weren't really rock climbing, it was just a blank wall, but it made them feel like they were rock climbing. And then when they laid down, it looked like they were on the, like laying, like floating in the sky, but they weren't. They were just laying on the ground. Like that's super cool. I want that. But anyways, it was super cute, and it was like a nice moment in the story where nothing was like going on, nothing tragic was happening. I wasn't upset. It was just a cute moment. And then they go to that club. They decide to sneak out when Marka goes to get that new kid, and at first, like. So I was like, I'm not going. And I was like, dude, you're such a, like, a not fun person. Because you don't understand yet that like he's like terrified of getting caught and it even cost him his sister. So yeah, I'm just like, dude, you're like no fun. Why can't you just go out with them? Like, have fun. And then they got there and it was Club Argent. And I had to laugh because Teen Wolf, I was like, I know that that means silver, but I only know it because of Teen Wolf. And I made that connection. And they go and like, it was cool to see the them all like try to be normal like Wilbur when he had like the things on his shoulders that made his second head disappear or how like Vita had to like make her skit her face look white and then like wear long sleeves like it was just cool to see them try to act normal it was just kind of funny and then they get there and I at first didn't like think it that they were gonna any that it was I thought it was just gonna be like a fun scene I didn't realize that like it was gonna be so much a part of the plot like she sees Dill and then she goes down to like the hallucinatory rooms and there's these weird drugs and like I would be afraid to go in those rooms because like I don't wanna there's people like tripped up on something like there was pills and then there was those weird bubble things and like everybody was acting weird and I guess it makes sense because then the weird genetically modified kids can like hang out there and it's not weird because people just think they're hallucinating because like they're all hopped up on drugs so that was interesting and then when she sees Dill I was like how is Dill even there and then you find out that it's because the uh, Arius house is underneath Club Argent, which was really cool, and it made so much sense. We find out that Zelia is the one with the power, not Dill. Like, this whole time, I'm like, oh, what's Dill's power? Like, what's, it's really cool. Like, what is it? I want to know. Why'd she get kidnapped? And then you find out that her sister is so uninteresting, and it's really her that's interesting, and she's, like, basically a human fountain of youth, and her DNA is not her chromosomes aren't x-shaped they're like shaped like infinity signs like that's so cool but i'm also con kind of confused about that because she's not like she doesn't age because if she didn't age she would still be a baby so like does she stop aging at a certain like checkpoint like at a certain age does she just not get any older or does she have does she like i don't know 
I don't, I don't know. Or does she just never die? Like, she keeps getting older, but she just doesn't die. Because I know that, like, telomerase, like, the reason you're, when your telomeres degrade, that's why you age. So if her telomeres don't degrade, then she shouldn't age. But then when does she stop aging? These are the things I want to know. And then Zelia visits Anna and, like, is, like, freaking out because she's like, why am I hearing voices in my head? And it turns out to be Anna. And, like, she has this weird power where she, her power is she can, like, project her thoughts into your mind. So she can, like, talk inside your head. It's weird, but it's also super cool. And I thought it was so sweet how Zelia was, like, became friends with Anna. And, like, it didn't matter that she was, like, crazy and, like, left baby doll heads in her room. Because she just kind of, like, became her friend. And, like, I felt like throughout the book, Anna became a little less crazy. Because she kind of had a friend besides her brother. And she knows her brother, like, feels really guilty. So I feel like whenever she hangs out with Sai, she, like, I felt like she felt guilty for making him feel guilty and she like felt bad for him but Zelia she didn't have that with Zelia. Zelia was just a friend to her like I, I just thought was, that was really cute. Then we get to the end where Zelia pulls a total Triss move. Oh I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go. I pro I promise. I'm, I'm, I, I know it's a bad idea. I'm not gonna go. And then she goes. You do not understand my annoyance when female characters do that. Like, why don't you just be like, hell no, screw you, I'm gonna go. But they're like, no, it's fine. And then she obviously, it wasn't even just like they fell asleep. She drugged them so that they would pass out. And I don't know, I just like, it made me so mad because, ugh, I had to deal with three books of that during the D Divergent trilogy. Like, three books of Triss. Just doing things she knew she shouldn't do. Like, everybody was like, no, we will help you. And then she was like, no. She was like, all right, fine. You guys can help me. I won't do it by myself. And then she would just do it by herself. It was so stressful and so annoying. And if Zelia is going to do that, then I'm just going to, like, want to beat my head against a wall all the time. She tries to, like, oh, I'm just going to trade my body, like, my weird elixir thing for Delia. Except for her elixir doesn't work. So they're like, nah, we just want both of you now. But then, of course, Sai comes and trades himself. And at first I didn't really, like, get that he was trading himself. I thought he was just trading, like, his knowledge or, like, his trait. Like, he had somehow bottled his trait. Because, like, you know, like, the stuff that healed them. Like, I thought he was just trading that. Like, I didn't know he was trading, like, himself. Like, he was going to stay there and exchange for them. So that made me mad because then I was like, you can't just, like, leave him there. It made me so mad and so I like ran to the computer I was like there better be a sequel and there is a sequel and I don't remember what it's called but it comes out this year like in fall I think so that's really exciting and I don't I don't think it's gonna be just a duology I think it's gonna be more than two books so I'm stressing for the second book but I'm also excited for the second book well that's really all I had to talk about so I'm excited for the sequel, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!